द कंपेयर एंड स्वैप ऑपरेशन और इन शॉर्ट कैश ऑपरेशन इज अ फंडामेंटल कॉन्सेप्ट इन कंकरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग इट इज यूज टू इम्प्लीमेंट लॉक फ्री डेटा स्ट्रक्चर एंड इंश्योर थ्रेड सेफ अपडेट्स ऑन द शेयर डेटा कैश इज एन ऑटोमिक ऑपरेशन दैट अलाउज अ थ्रेड टू अपडेट अ वैल्यू इन मेमोरी ओनली इफ इट हैजन बीन मॉडिफाइड बाई अनदर थ्रेड सिंस इट वॉज लास्ट थ्रेड it is used to achieve non blocking synchronization which can help improve the concurrency and reduce the complexity of using traditional locking mechanisms like locks and semaphores let us discuss the basic idea behind cache the cache operation begins by reading the current value of a memory location or a variable this value is typically referred to as the expected value and it is used as a baseline for the comparison in next step then the thread compares the red value with the expected value if the red value is equal to the expected value it means that the memory location hasn't been modified by any other thread since it was read last time if the comparison is successful that is the read value is equal to the expected value the cache operation proceeds with the update with the new value on that particular memory location with the new value if the comparison fails the operation is considered unsuccessful and no update is made let's try to understand this with an example suppose we have two threads and one shared resource which is a variable let's say x and its current value is 10 thread 1 is supposed to double the value after reading it and write it back and thread 2 is supposed to triple the value after reading and write it back so in the beginning if we see when thread 1 and thread 2 both uh, execute get value call from that particular shared resource the x value of 10 will be returned to both the threads now thread 1 will try to double its value and make the value of x to 20 and thread 2 will make it 30 so both the threads will call a cache operation by passing 10 and the new value so what will happen let's say thread 2 was able to call the cache operation on the shared resource before the thread 1 so at that particular time the current value which was 10 was equal to the baseline value which was 10 stored in thread 2 so the cache operation was successful and the value was updated to 30 in the memory but let's say thread 1 was little behind thread 2 and but it was also having the baseline value as 10 and the new value as 20 so when it tries to call the cache operation on that the baseline value which is 10 was not equal to the actual current value which is 30 because thread 2 has already updated the value to 30 so now in this case the cache operation will fail or it will return false and as per our logic Uh, that we can implement depending on our business requirement so in this case what we'll do we will again call the get value to get the latest value by the thread 1 which is 30 and based on that current value it will again double its value and execute the cache operation again with 30 and 60 as parameters and as currently the value is 30 so that this cache operation will be successful and 60 will be returned to the shared resource so this is how compare and swap operations works internally the key advantage of cache is that it provides atomic operation without the need of locks it ensures that only one thread can successfully update the memory location at a time and all other threads attempting the operation will be aware about the failure allowing them to take the appropriate action like retrying the operation or using an alternate strategy so the same thing that we have discussed in our example like if the value is already updated by some other thread from 5 to some other value then our current thread in our current thread we can define a strategy whether to reexecute that business logic and double the current value and then try to update it back cache is a building block for many concurrent data structures and algorithms such as lock free linked list we have stacks queues and many more it can also be used in conjunction with atomic variables like atomic integer or atomic reference to implement thread safe data structures now enough with the theory let's see an example as well so here first we have this class node which represents the element of a stack 
it contains the current element value and a pointer to the next element in the stack. So what we are trying to achieve here, we are trying to create an atomic stack here. So that particular stack will only be able to update by a single thread at one particular time. So we will have push and pop operation similar to the stack data structure. So for that, this node represents one element of that particular stack. Then we have this atomic stack class in which we will allow multiple threads to push and pop the elements onto and from the stack without the need of explicit locks that will make it suitable for the concurrent access. Now here we have atomic reference named top that is used to keep the track of top element of that particular stack. It ensures that multiple threads can update the top reference automatically without data races. So data races we have already discussed in our previous video. So if you want to understand any of the previous concepts which are explained, please go check out the playlist of Java multithreading. And this particular top variable is getting initialized in the constructor of atomic stack class. Then we have push method, which is used to push a new element onto the stack. It follows a lock free approach using compare and swap mechanism. First, a new node is created to hold the value to be pushed onto the stack. Then this while loop continues until the push operation is successful. Inside the loop, we are reading the current top value of the stack using top.getCall and storing it in a current node. Then we can do some processing based on the current value and update the details as required. After that, the current node is added as the next reference to the new node. That means the new node will point to the second element in the stack, which was the top value earlier. Now using compare and set method from the atomic reference, it performs a cache operation to update the top reference with the new node as a new top. If the cache operation succeeds, it means that no other thread has modified the top reference in the meantime and push operation is complete. So in this, first we get the top value and then based on some calculations, a new value will be created. And during the update time, compare and set function checks if the earlier retrieved value is unchanged. And if it is the case, then it will push the latest value. Otherwise, it will again fetch the latest value and perform the same operation and retry the compare and set operation. Similarly, we have pop method, which is used to pop an element or remove an element from stack. In this also, we have an infinite while loop similar to the push method. This loop ensures that the pop operation is atomic and keeps trying until it succeeds. Inside the loop, we are reading current top value of the stack using top.get. And if the top is null, then we are returning null. Otherwise, a new top element is created and added as a next element in the current top. So what it will do, it will see what is the next element which is present in the current top element that will be assigned as the next top of that particular stack. Now using compare and set method, it attempts a cache operation to update the top reference to a new top. If the cache operation succeeds, it means the pop operation is successful and it returns the value contained in the popped node. These atomic operations ensures that the stack operations are thread safe without requiring explicit locks or synchronization. So here you can see we have not used any locking or any synchronized blocks or methods. This allows multiple threads to concurrently push and pop the element from stack without any conflict. But you need to understand that atomic variables or these cache operations, they are not a replacement for logs or any other synchronization mechanism, but they are some tools for building highly concurrent and efficient applications when used appropriately. So they have their own use cases. They are specially useful in the scenarios where fine grained synchronization and high performance are required as they minimize the contention and reduce the need of explicit locking, which can lead to the deadlocks and performance bottlenecks. 
so that is it for this video if you find this video useful please give us a like and share it with your friends in case you want to learn more about multi-threading or java related topics please check out the playlist given in the description and please provide your feedback next we will cover locks in java so till then thank you so much for watching keep learning